Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf. Hayyeh Michul and Daf Chafav, we are on Amr Alf, two lines from the top. Ve'om Rav Nachman, Amar Rabba, Baravo. This relates back to the Mishnah. We spoke about Temed. So it's this uh, grape drink. They take the grape residue, the grape uh, skins, pits, after pressing them into grape juice. So you have the this uh, grape uh, material on which they pour water, which sits there. And eventually, for the most part, will ferment, will develop into some sort of alcoholic beverage. What is the status of this temid? Is it water? Is it juice? Is it... So in the Mishnah, we have this distinction between before and after. Before it ferments, actually hechmitz, we call it chimutz, fermentation, it is still regarded as plain water. So it's uh, just water. You can't use Master Shani money uh, to buy it in Yushalayim because that's only meant for uh, foodstuffs, not water or salt. It would be putter from ma- maser. You don't take off maser from uh, water. But after fermentation, Misha Hechmetz, it is now elevated, upgraded to the status of wine. It's a wine drink. Says the Gemara now, what happens if Temet, right? This Temet Shalokhoi because of maser. He used Master Shani money to buy the Temet while it was still watery, before it uh, exhibited signs of fermentation. It hadn't developed into a drink yet. <laughs> a week later, oh, beautiful. It developed into this beverage. It's fermented. It's now wine. <laughs> we regard the initial, the, the original sale as valid. Although at that point, it was not yet developed was not yet fermented. The sale is valid. The purchase works. Why? My time of why? Igloy Muslim Afreya. Now it's been revealed retroactively. It was, wasn't developed yet. It wasn't realized, but the potential was there. The process had already begun. The peruhu, it's fruit, it's fruit juice. Because if it wasn't there initially, it never would have happened out of the blue. It wouldn't just happen magic, right? So the fact that it happened now shows that it was this way all along. It wasn't just, it just wasn't yet realized, it wasn't revealed. So technically it's called fruit juice, in which case Master Shani money can be used to purchase it. Ask the Gemara, but hold it, what about our Mishnah? Which sets a very clear condition. Fermented or not fermented? And if it's not fermented, it doesn't work. Even though later on it will get fermented, we don't say, well, lema freya retroactive. We don't say that. Elamas nisna. What about our mission, the ton of where it says regarding using, you know, Master Shani money, only hechmetz in, only if it's fermented already now. You can make that purchase. Loi hechmetz loi, but otherwise not. And the question is why? How can we just cancel the deal? Dilma, perhaps. Ishafke. Sure, now it smells, looks, tastes like water. But had you have just left it sitting for a week, have a machmetz, it would have fermented. How, how would you ever know? Rashi says, actually, roiv, for the most part, these things uh, do ferment, do develop. Um, Rabbi, you're right. We're speaking that he actually took a sample before he drank the he put aside because he left over some in the glass left it on the side came back a week later just plain water as it was so now we know it's nothing more than water but otherwise if it's just sitting around if, if it um, does actually right ferment then it works retroactively Rav Amar, Rav says like this, it's really a machlekes. There is a shita which holds that even if later on it develops, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect its status 
retroactively. Because we don't refer to the, the essence. We focus on the, on the externals, on what it looks like, on what it tastes like. That's what counts. And if currently it doesn't taste like water, like wine, it doesn't have that wine quality, it's not. So our mission is a different shita than the shita that's been referred to a minute ago. Rav Amar Hamas, Hamani Rabbi Yechemanuri, it's going like his shita, it's not. Where do we find his shita? So we have a Mishnah, Gimel Lug and Mayim, three Lug of water, Mayim Shu'uven, we're talking, uh, in a pail, Chaser Kurta, missing just a drop, let's say, you know, missing an ounce, okay? So it doesn't have the, the amount, which, if it falls into a mikvah, would disqualify it, right? It has to be three Lug of drawn water. It's less than that. Shenafal Techen Kurt of Yain, into which dropped a Kurt of this missing amount, this missing ounce of wine. To complete the three look. Umar ein kamar yain. As we know, even a little bit of wine would tinge the entire mix and looks like wine. Vinafal al mikvah. And this whole thing dumps into the mikvah. And the mikvah was speaking that's not yet full. Because if the mikvah is up to capacity, that it's not affected by this adding of, you know, drawn water. It's not a full mikvah. Now, three look fell into it. Loipasalu. It does not adversely affect the mikvah. You know why? Because there are no three lug of water. The halacha is that three lug of water in a mikvah makes a problem. But here it's less than three lug. The rest is wine. Wine doesn't have that property. Doesn't have that destructive, you know, effect. Gimu lug and maim chaser kurtav. Okay, another one of the same idea. You have three lug of water missing an ounce. Shenavol atoychen kurtav cholam, to which dropped a drop of an ounce of milk. And when milk mixes into wine, it just sort of blends in and now it looks clear Umar e and Kamari Maim and the entire mix looks like water and they drop into the mikvah again there's no uh, adverse effect because although it appears like water but it's not it's not a full amount of water okay that's the Tanakam that's the Chacham we uh, focus on the essence, on what it really is. Rabbi Yechonah Benuri Oymir says, No! It's all about appearance. So, in this case, despite there not being a full amount of water, but since the mix looks like water, it attains that property, and we treat it like three lug of water. Okay, so love on Rabbi Yechanan. So doesn't Rabbi Yechanan just, didn't he just teach us? Basar chazus azlinan. We ignore the essence. Rather, we focus on the appearance. Achanami here as well. Back to our story of the Temet. It's going to become, it could become, but right now. Achanami zil basar chazus. look at the, Appearance, the time and the flavor. It's not. Now it's water. The chazusa, the high mayin, it looks like water. So we ignore the essence, we ignore the potential, we ignore the fact that it's mid process and we treat it like water. Whereas the chachamim would, would disagree. According to them, if eventually it fermented, that's indicative of its uh, initial state, initial property. The essence is, uh, is, uh, is wine. In which case, it can be treated as such. Okay, now, this whole Gemara was based on our understanding that the, the Mishnah, which conditions it upon yet fermenting and not fermenting, is Rabbi Shita, because he's the one who says that fermented Temid is in fact regarded as wine. And the Chacham say, no, well, even so it's not. Upligid Rabbi Lazar, that opinion, that approach in understanding the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, the Rabbanan, is unlike Rabbi Lazar. He has a different approach. He holds that even according to Rabbi Yehuda, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, even though it's not yet fermented, since eventually we assume it will be, it's treated like wine. So you don't have to have that fermentation take place for us to treat it like wine. It's a totally different approach to Rabbi Yehuda's shita. Don't Rabbi Lazar. Hakal ma'idim. Sheim nafrishin olav makam achar. Elam ken hechmitz. He holds like this. According to Rabbi Yehuda, 
you can regard this temer as being obligated in truma and master. The assumption is that eventually it will ferment, and in which case it will be applied retroactively because the process has already begun, like we explained before. That's Rabbi approach. So he says, look, you want to take off truma, master, from the temet, from in itself? Sure, but don't take it from somewhere else upon this. Typically you can do that. It can be mighty, right? You can do truma from a different you know, bucket and have this in mind. You can't do it in this case. Because perhaps that temet will stay water and this will become wine or vice versa. So you can't cross them over. How come I all agree? Even Rabbi the agrees, shame not frishin all of makam achar. You can't do the trum or the master from a different temid upon this one, El Mekin Hechmetz, unless you know that, you know, this is, um, it's fermented. Unless it's confirmed. Right? That they're both fermented, that they're both wine, fine. Otherwise, you're taking a chance. But what could you do? You could take it from it in itself. It's a of shach. Either way, you're covered. If it will ferment, so it's already considered fermented now. Right? Because we look at potential. Otherwise, if it stays water, fine. So water is never chayv and truma. That's Rabida's opinion. So he holds even before fermentation. We treat it, in a sense, like wine. Because somebody holds, machlekes. So Rabbi presented this equation, holds that the machlekes, meaning Rabida's shita, is even v'layachmetz. Without actual fermentation being realized. Because what it happens, it, it's applied retroactively. When Rabbi Yudha obligates Truma and Master on this, on this Temet, on this undeveloped Temet, that's only from it in itself. So you take off a little bit, you put on this, you can't do it from an outside source. Why? Because perhaps they're unequal. That one will turn into wine, this won't. Or just the opposite. It might end up that that one is chayv, this, one, this one is potter, so you can't exempt chayv on ptur. Un ptur al chayv, the opposite. Maybe that one will never turn into wine, it will be potter. So you're taking off truma for something which is not chayv, and trying to exempt al chayv on something which will develop into wine, which is chayv, so you can't mix them up. Continues the Gemara on the topic of tevel. Tan Rabbah. Ha temet. Okay, so this temet that we're talking about. So according to... Uh, our Mishnah, our discussion in the Gemara, it really depends on fermentation. Achaloi Hichmetz, before it ferments, is treated like like water, right? And Tesis Rush points out that we're speaking, um, that it was confirmed later on, it never fermented, right? You put aside a sample, which never, uh, you know. Okay, in any case, you know that it's. Uh, Regular water. Unsuccessful temid. A temid actually is a temid before fermentation. And like we said, confirmed. Not to have that ability, will not ferment. So it's now plain water. Meshika Bamai. So now let's say it becomes tummy, we turn tummy base. It turns tummy. We know that food and drink, you know, once it's tame, it's a permanent state. You can't really relieve the tumor. You can't um, remove the tumor. You can't put it in a mikvah, right? Only uh, persons and utensils could have, you know, tefillah in a mikvah, but not food and drink. But there is a way out. There's a way to relieve the uh, liquid of its tumor. Rashi explains it's called hashaka, where you... Hashaka means the kiss. It means you... Um, have this liquid come into contact with a stream, with a lake, or with a mikvah. That works differently than a tvila. It's not like you're immersing it. You're just connecting it. You're nullifying. You're being a vatal. It's like you know, planting a seed in the ground. It becomes bottle, It becomes nullified to the, uh, you know, the greater entity. So it loses its personal entity, so its personal identity, so to speak, and it loses its tumma. And that only works with water. Water touching water, etc. But if it's juice... You can't be mavatal juice. It has a flavor, it has different properties. You can't be mavatal. It doesn't work. So this temid can be treated like water with respect to this halacha. So in fact, if it has no fermentation and it happens to be tome, no problem. Mashiki b'mayim. 
have it come into contact with the you know the water, the mikvah, whatever, and uh, that's it. it. Loses its tumah. Once it ferments, it's wine. You can't do the ashaka with water. Amarava. This that ashaka is allowed. That's only true. It's to be mind to her. But it's more. He made the tamid using water which was tar, and after it got mixed with the uh, other you know elements, then it becomes tummy. So as Tysus explains, since the tumma occurred while it was already mixed, so you can be matire it in the same manner. Just take it and the way it is, the mix, and make a shaka on the water, on the mikvah. But suppose the water had become tamid, and then he mixed it into the tamid. It takes on sort of a new form. It's now a mix of water. You cannot uh, do a shakar on the water element in this mix, because it's already mixed in with others. Also, Rav Gviyam Bekasa, that was his name, and he went, Amr, he went and he told over, Lishmata Kamid Ravashi presented this distinction, and he asked, he says, what's the difference? Water is water is water. Either way, we have a mix, right? So you're making that differentiation between where the water became tummy post mix, then hashaka works, versus if it absorbed it, it's tumma pre mix. So once you mix it, you can't do hashaka. Why? What's the difference? Why is it that if the water comes tummy before it got mixed in? You can no longer do hashaka. I mean, we say, well, there are barriers. I did the Maya, since the water, Yakiri, is heavier relative to the fruit juice, Shachnitoy, that sinks to the bottom, Upeira, the juice element, Kapi Mil'el, floats to the top. So now when he's going to take this pail and sort of make a slight touch to the mikvah, I did the, um, Salka, Shakala Maya, the water, it's sunk down, will not actually come into contact with the mikvah. It's hiding. Beneath the uh, residue. Right? So he says like this So, what about when the water was tar, got mixed into the uh, temet, and then it became tummy? Same story. Ultimately, it's a mix of water with the other you know, elements. The water became tummy, and he's uh, inaccessible. Hello, my You have to say it's not an issue because it all gets mixed together. It's one entity. So when you uh, touch the water to the uh, to the temet, you've touched the water within the temet too. It's all one inseparable entity. Achanam, the is the same with the other case. The water became tummy separate, then it got mixed in. Ultimately, now it's a mix. It's one entity. So as long as he touches it to the water, it's okay. Says the mission. mecher and knas. Here comes another. Opposites, you know, equation. Two sides of the same coin. We're going to contrast mecher and knas. So, young girl, aktana, below maturity. We know the pasuk allows a father to sell her as an ama, as a maidservant. That's mecher. mecher. The age which allows for mecher and knas does not allow for knas. Well, she says, if Nensa and Ispatata, if a man interacted with her forcefully or convinced her, there is a, a penalty to be paid to the father. And that will not apply by Iktana, that only applies by an adult, by a Nara, as the Pasuk says. And vice versa, Hamakam Sheesh Knas, where Knas is applicable when she's a Gdoila, in Mechar, there's no longer the ability to do Mechir. So they're the direct opposites. Am Rabbi Damarav, well, Zudir Rabbi, that's Rameer's opinion. That's always, you know, one or the other. Which is a ktana, mecher yes, knas no. Which is a gdola, knas yes, mecher no. Avachacham, Aymrim, they say, even a ktana has potential for knas. Even though the Pasuk speaks about na'ara, which refers to the um, 12, 12 and a half age, right between 12 and 12. And a half. But since it's spelled without a hey, it can be read like na'ar, denoting even younger than that. They disagree. Yesh knas. Knas will apply even when she's a ktana de sanya. We find in the Brisa. Ktana me basi mecha da ashe tovish teish saris. A ktana from one day old. Until she exhibits two saris, which means bas mitzvah. Yesh la mecha. So mecha applies, but no knas. Ain't no knas. Ashe tovish saris. Ashe te boger from 12 until 12 and a half. 
when she's fully mature. So the tables turn. Yesh lo knas me lo mecher knas yes mecher no. Divrei Ramir, who says that it's always one or the other. Shayer me oimer kol machem sheish mecher when mecher is applicable. I e ektano and knas there's no knas and vice versa. Kol machem sheish knas and mecher when there's knas there's no mecher. Chacham oimer they disagree. You can have knas even as a ktano. Ktano mi bas gimel shanu mi mechad from three years and a day. Where the concept of interaction with a man is applicable at that point, actually the bugger until twelve and a half when she's fully mature, Yesh lo knas, knas will apply. Says the Gemara, only knas. What about mecher? Knas in only knas applies during that time frame. Mecher loy, but not mecher. Ema yeah, af be knas be makem mecher. That knas runs from here all the way to there. Mecher applies until she's 12. And the Chiddush is that even during that Mecher range, Knas will apply as well. Okay, next equation. Mion versus Chalitza. Mion is when a, a young woman was married up by her, not her father, her brother, her mother. So this uh, orphan has the ability to marry only with the Rabban, so she can turn around and walk away. She dislikes her husband, she can reject him, it's called Mion. So as long as she's still a Ktana, below adulthood, she can do Mion. But at the same time, in Chalitza, there's no Chalitza. But the Pasuk says, it has to be a man or a woman, it has to be an adult. So, suppose um, the youngster had been married or by her father, which is a marriage in Torah, and her husband passed away without children. The brother will attempt to do chalitza, but he can't if she's a ktana. And vice versa, when she's uh, an adult, where chalitza is relevant, and mion, mion is no longer relevant. Once she turns adult, she can't do mion. Once again, it's Rameer speaking. That is direct opposites. They hold that. Even once she turns adult, she can still do mian until she turns into a full mature, fully mature adult. Yeish mian b'makam chalitza. Mian is relevant even when she's an adult and is chalitza enabled. The sign you have a Not say bas man. At what point can she do mian? So Rameir says until twelve. I should tell you she until she exhibits a two pubic hair until she becomes a regular adult. Rameir, Rabbi Daimir, no, she has a little bit more time. Until the black, the hair, grow, Allah love it, on the white, on the white skin surrounding, meaning she is fully mature. So even past the 12 year mark. Continues in Mishnah. There's another contrasting equation comparing Takiya. Takiya, they would blow the shaifar on Erev Shabbos and Yantav right before darkness to. Uh, make the you know public aware of the oncoming Shabbos, so that they can cease doing uh, you know work malacha. So tkiya is to herald in a kedusha, in anticipation of a higher kedusha. Havdal, on the other hand, achieves exactly the opposite effect. Like we do Havdal matzah Shabbos to separate to the friendship between the higher experience that we have already experienced. The French aid between that and the drop down, the downgrade of the upcoming weekday. So Tkia denotes an upgrade, Havdallah a downgrade. Kamakam Shesh Tkia in Havdallah. Wherever we do Tkia, which is an upgrade, we do not do Havdallah. And vice versa. Kamakam Shesh Havdallah and Tkia. When there's Havdallah, which denotes a downgrade, there's no Tkia. Because they are exactly the opposite. So now what happens if you run into a situation where both are really uh, applicable. For instance, Yom Tov leading into Shabbos. So you're leaving the Yom Tov, which you would think requires Havdalah, but you're going into Shabbos, which needs Tekiah. Yom Tov, Shechol is better of Shabbos. Yom Tov falls on an air of Shabbos. What do we do? Taiken. They blow. Why? Because Shabbos is an upgrade. Why? Says Rashi, because in contrast to Yom Tov where they cook and they do malachis for Food preparation, Eichel Nefesh, on Shabbos you don't do that, so the Kedusha is higher, which deserves Eitzkiya. But you don't do Avdallah, because you're going up instead of down. 
And vice versa, with Matzah Shabbos, if Yom Tov falls out on Matzah Shabbos, then you go the other way, Mabdil, you do Abdullah. Because you're downgrading from Shabbos to Yom Tov. Like talking, you don't do, you don't do Tkiyah. Ketan Mabdilim. So in this case, where it's Matzah Shabbos going into Yom Tov, what text do you say during the Havdalah? Typically, we say Hamavdal ben Kodesh Lachayel, holy to, to, to non holy, but it's not really, because Yom Tov is also holy. Maybe not on the same level as Shabbos, but Hamavdal ben Kodesh Lachayel. Tanakama says, you say Havdalah ben Kodesh Lachayel between one type of holiness and another type of holiness. We don't know. sort of put down the Yom Tev. So we still call it Kodesh, albeit a lower le- level of Kedusha. But they say, no, you say it outright. You say, Avdallah ben Kodesh Chamer, between the higher Kedusha, Shabbos, the Kodesh Akal, to the lesser Kedusha of Yom Tev. We spell it out. Hechet HaKeah, says the Gemara. So when Yom Tev falls on an Erev Shabbos, which necessitates a Tkia, but it's a bit of a different type of Tkia, than a regular weekday going into Shabbos. Here it's just, you know, upgrading a level. So we have to sort of show that. Express it in the form of Tkiah. In a way that's different than a regular of Shabbos. Perhaps out of respect to the Yom Tiv, right? Amr Vida Tkiah, Maria Metecha Tkiah. Typically you do Tkiah and then a true here. It's one continuum. Tkiah, you do the Continuous sound, tu, and then umeria, which is the broken, tu, 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 mitoich, tkia, as a continuation of the tkia. So you go, tu, 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 straight through, which is different than a regular week. Ravasi Omar, he says a bit differently, tkia, maria, benishima, achas. You can make a little uh, pause, but benishima, achas. You go from the flat sound to the broken sound, benishima, achas, in one breath. Ask him of Asi Behutzos in the town of Hutzor of Asi established Kishmaite in accordance with his opinion. May Svei comes a kash. Yom Tov Chalil is very Shabbos. Yom Tov is on Friday. Toikin Lemirian. It's only Tkiyah without Tzrua. My love Lemirian Klal. Apparently you don't do Tzrua at all. In contrast to what we just said that you do Tzrua but just in a different way. Lo, I know. Rabbi the Metar Stamei. Rabbi the explained the Bryce in accordance with his description. And likewise, Ravasi, Ravasi Taras Tamei, Ravidu Taras Tamei. The Brai didn't mean that you delete the Trua altogether. Just do it differently than a regular week. Loi Marian Bifnei Atzmi, you don't do Trua on its own. Elam Teich Tkiah, rather it's sort of a conclusion of the Tkiah. Ravasi Taras Tamei, Ravasi takes his approach. Loi Marian Mishtei Nishimus, instead of doing Tkiah with one breath, and then taking a breath and resuming the Trua, Elam Rishim Achatz is done in one breath. Matayu Shabbos. Yom Tov falls on Matzah Shabbos. You do have Dala, and according to Tanakhama, it's being Kodesh le Kodesh. According to Rabbi Yosef, being Kodesh Chamer le Kodesh Akal. So the question is, okay, being Kodesh le Kodesh. Where in Havdala do we say it? So whether it's Rashi says, by the way, Havdala here means during davening and also with a cup of wine. So we're in the Havdala. We start Hamavda being Kodesh le Chayil, being Israel. I mean, right? And you conclude, Baruch Atah Hashem, HaMavdil Ben Kodesh Lechol. That's, you know, standard. So here we insert, Ben Kodesh Kodesh, where? In the body of the bracha or at the conclusion? Hey, Ha'amr Lo, Amr Vida B'chasimah, only at the end. So the actual body of the bracha remains the same. Because it's sort of a standard package, describing all the different types of Havdalahs. We will say that in a minute. Seder Havdalahs. There's a system, there's a a list of different types of separations that we find in the Torah, we find in the world. The introduction is being Kodesh L'chayel, that's sort of the introduction. And it expresses itself uh, in all different ways. In terms of the, uh, the world, the people in the world, the time factors in the world, right? Ben Ur L'chayshech, Light and dark, Israel Amen, between Israel and the rest of the nations, that's people. Ben Yamashvil Shayzim Amasa, between the seventh day and the seven and the six work days. So world, people, and time, perhaps. So we, we stick to that text. It's just at the end, when we cap it up, we say Brahata Hashem, Hamavda bin Kadesh Lakodesh. By the way, interestingly, I saw the Meiri brings, he says, you know, 
you know, Rashi brings that all these Habdolis have sourcings in the Torah. Be'kodesh l'choyel, we have a Pasuk, l'habdol b'n kodesh b'n achoyel. It's a Pasuk in Ve'ikro Yud. Rashi, the, the bottom brings this. Uh, light and day, light and the, and the night and, and the oyer and choyshech, light and darkness, that's back in Bereshis, right? Yisrael la'amim, that's va'abdol eschem and amel li that's in Ve'ikro uh, Chaf. And Yom Ashvi l'sheish me'ah, that's another version of Kodesh l'cho. Says the Meir, what about this new Havdalah, in Kodesh Kodesh, where do we find it? In t- Everything has to be sourced in the Torah. He says, listen to this. He says, we find it. V'yivdila ha-poroiches lochem b'in ha-kodesh, b'in kodesh ha-kodoshim. The poroiches in the Mishkan made that separation, that separation between Kodesh, the Hechel, and Kodesh ha the holier place. So they're both holy, just different levels of holiness. So you see, there's a distinct, there's Havdalah, the concept of Havdalah applies there too, and hence, we have a precedent for this new uh, Nusach of Ben Kodesh, the Kodesh, between Shabbos and Yad. Interesting. Meiri. The Chaynu Rav Nachman Chasimosa, like Rav Nachman, placed it at the end of the bracha. Rav Sheish is buried the Rav Yidom Apsichasa. Not only at the end, you can start with that as well. Baruch Atah Hashem Elkeinu Acham, Hamadu Ben Kodesh, the Kodesh, Ben Adol Choyshech, Veles, Hilchas, like I say, we don't follow this uh, in practice. Rashi explains, because we, uh, we just stick to the regular... Um, seder, the order, the arrangement of the Abdullah, the various distinctions, various separations. It's just at the very end, we modify to Ben Kodesh Le Kodesh. Rabbi Doi, so I remember Ben Kodesh Chomer, Le Kodesh Akal. The Abdullah here is referred to as Kodesh Chomer, which is Shabbos, Kodesh Kal, which is Yom Tev, less. Once again, we don't adopt this in practice. Hilchaz Gavasei, Rashi explains, because we don't want to be Mazalza, we don't want to downgrade the Yom Tif to call him uh, with a different name, Kodesh Akal, so we sort of stick to being Kodesh the Kodesh. So we call him Kodesh, despite his lower status, relative to Shabbos. Omar Abzeira. We spoke about Yom Tif adjacent to Shabbos. What about Yom Tif on a Tuesday? How do we make Abdul? Yom Tif Shechol Yitzbe Emtza Shabbos. Yom Tif falls out in the middle of the week. So, Matzah Shabbos, sure, we say, Ben Yem Ashri, Lusheshes, Yem Yem Asa, seven, day seven, and the rest of it. But here it's a Tuesday, it's not the seventh day. Aymer, you stick to the same text. Well, that's the Abdullah package that applies in all circumstances. Hamavda Ben Kadesh Lechoyl, Ben Ar Lechoyshech, Ben Yisrael Amen, or Ben Yem Ashri, Lusheshes Yem Yem Asa. The question is, why? We're speaking about Tuesday, not about Shabbos. Why speak about Shvi? My time is Seder Abdullah. He enumerates the Seder, the listing of Abdullah that we find in the Torah. So Abdullah circles back to the Torah. It's sourced in the Abdullahs of the Torah. And the Abdullah ceremony is a declaration of, the, of these various separations between holy and unholy. And all its versions, all its uh, applications, and that applies on Tuesday too, because it's just about the concept of separation and appreciating the ability, privilege to have the lofty experience whenever. Okay, so we spoke about the Temet pre and post fermentation, we spoke about the age factors of Mecher and Knas, Mion versus Chalitza, and Tkia versus Havdalam, Hadron Lohakal Shoichten, all the best to you, Natslachar.